It's time for another Korean monitor review, the Crossover 32S. Now this is an A-MVA Plus panel type, 2560 by 1440, and 10-bit uh, color. Aside from that, we don't know anything about it, so let's find out. Whee! It's surprising that the uh, monitors are able to make it here from Korea with so with you know relatively a small amount of padding. Have you ever had physical damage? Uh, once or twice out of a hundred. Uh, our Korean power adapter. The mount. The rest of the mount. It's a lot of foam. <laughs> Ooh, bonus! Get an extra power adapter. <laughs> power brick and remote and some cables. So the first thing I noticed looking at the back of this is that the back of it looks identical to the crossover 324K, which is a 4K monitor. So my guess is it's very similar production line, production system, just different LCD panels and different firmware. Now this is just a normal NEMA power cable uh, and you can use it with the adapter that's Totally fine. So like that for us, this is the North American power adapter, big deal. But we don't, we just get another power cable. Power cable just doesn't matter. Audio cable, remote, assembly tools, power brick. What's the specs on this? Power brick is 24 volts, 2.5 amps. Now at the back of the monitor, we do have display port, VGA. Who uses VGA? DVI and HDMI. But the monitor comes with a dual link DVI cable. Dual link looks like this, you know, edge connector, this on the edge. A dual link cable is what you'll have to use to run any resolution over 1920 by 1200 on DVI, at least at 60 hertz. Uh, but it does also support DisplayPort, but you'd have to pick up a DisplayPort cable if you want to use DisplayPort. Now, when we do our latency testing, we'll want to test the latency on both DVI and DisplayPort because DisplayPort may actually be lower latency than DVI, or maybe not, depending on how the internals are implemented. And then we've got a manual, which is going in the trash. Uh, for this monitor, because it's a new type of panel, or at least a panel that I'm not sure that I've tested before, uh, we put it through a lot of testing. Now we did our standard, you know, frame latency testing, just eyeballing it, taking pictures with the high speed camera, doing the high speed camera test and sort of my back of the envelope, you know, how responsive is this monitor in terms of like a gray to gray time where it's a really light gray to a really dark gray. Uh, the math comes out to be about eight milliseconds um, to eight to 10 milliseconds per you know, per frame, which is, puts it, I mean, that's pretty good. 60 hertz is about 16 milliseconds per frame. Um, so overall, it, it worked out pretty well. We did the uh, the pixel layout testing. Um, the pixel layout testing was uh, uh, RGB. I think it was an RGB layout. Oh, for artificial testing, we did the UFO test. And now out of the box at 2560 by 1440, it did report 75 hertz. It did report as being capable of 75 hertz. Although there was a wider range of frequencies available on the display port input. I think that you might need to do the pixel clock patch thing for your drivers if you want to try to do it over HDMI. FreeSync on HDMI did work, but I'm going to recommend that you don't do that, that you want to you want to use FreeSync over display port. Um, it, it seemed to work on this monitor, but generally I'm going to recommend that you run FreeSync over, di over display port for a lot of various and complicated reasons. Uh, I was able to overclock the monitor past 75 hertz, although it did get some frame dropping much past 95 hertz, and that's at the native 2560 by 1440. Now, for fit and finish and mechanical features and things like that, there were a few little weird issues. We had two, I don't know if I would call them major issues, but two annoying things about this monitor. The worst is probably a bug that it has with the uh, input selector. While you're trying to find your input, the monitor will actually go to sleep if it can't find the current input, which makes it very annoying with the remote control to try to get it on the correct input if it's not the standard one. Yeah, the, the sequence is turn it on and then press input, input, and then the monitor goes to sleep. And so if your input is three or four clicks away, you're gonna have to turn the monitor back on and, and keep going. So that's not the end of the world. You're not gonna be changing inputs too often, probably with a completely dead input, but it's a, it's a weird bug and it's gonna annoy you in your initial setup. It took us a while to figure out what was going on exactly. Now, out of the box, the menus are going to come in Korean, but it's really easy to change that as well. Now, the other thing, and this is specific to the one that we have. I don't know how prevalent this is, but there are, on the mount in the back, there are four screw holes that hold this mount to the back of the monitor. Two of them wouldn't accept the screws. 
Uh, if you have some machine tools, you could fix it. But for a monitor of this price, it's weird to get that kind of problem. Yeah. Uh, it does have built-in speakers. The built-in speakers are basically crap, though. You should not use them. I mean, they're okay for beepers, but you definitely don't want to be listening to music or doing anything like that. It does have a standard 100 millimeter visa mount, though, and it comes with four visa screws, so you can use it with a different mount if you wanted to. You don't have to use this foot. The foot, otherwise, is nice. Uh, and everything else about it, the looks and the finish, we like. Now we, do, we also got to do a lot of sort of informal testing. Yeah, we played Doom. Doom is so well optimized, we found ourselves in, uh, with the problem of getting the frame rate low enough. <laughs> but we weren't able to get tearing, we weren't able to get dropped frames or anything. There was no problems with this monitor, no matter what we put it through with Doom. Yeah, so with the overclock, uh, you know, 75 hertz, 80 hertz, 95 hertz, uh, we would get that for the upper end of the FreeSync range. And some of the monitors that I've tested on the upper end of their FreeSync range, if you have the, uh, a monitor that's hovering up there, you'll still get a little bit of tearing. You need... You know, you need your frame rate to be in between the free sync range of the monitor. And so in this case, we had a pretty good free sync range overall, uh, but I didn't experience any tearing at the upper end. So when we were testing at Doom and I was getting, you know, 100, 110 frames per second in some cases before turning the graphic settings down, but I still didn't experience any tearing at all. Uh, that's with Vulkan, of course, you know, doing everything on Ultra Vulkan 390X. Uh, it worked really well. I was really surprised. Of course, pixel density at this size. It's a subjective thing. I like it having used a 27 inch monitor at this same pixel density. Uh, I kind of like this one better. It's more readable at medium distances. We're getting old. We're <laughs> old nerds. <laughs> so if you're a you know a young Counter Strike player, maybe not. But for certain use cases, it's really it's actually a pretty good, pretty comfortable spot for pixel density. I will say also that the matte finish and the black levels were really good. So I explicitly checked for backlight bleeding uh, against my Surface Pro or my Surface Book, which has some pretty significant bleed problems with its backlight. And the black levels on this were astonishingly good. It's one of the best monitors that I've seen for Korea um, in terms of like the actual black levels. Uh, using a Linux terminal, like a command line Linux terminal, you know, black on white, it was an absolute joy. The pixels were really well defined. The text mode console just looked amazing. There was no glow, there was no the, the pixel, the colors were perfectly consistent. It was a great experience. And the matte finish is really strong. You'll find on higher resolution monitors that they don't use a matte finish this strong because it can affect the clarity and the sharpness of the display. But even though this has got a really strong matte coating, the, sharp, the display sharpness was really, really good. Overall, we like it. Overall, it comes down to the price. What kind of a <laughs> price can you, can you get for the monitor? Because yeah. it ticks all the boxes in terms of not being crappy. It even has an on-screen reticle. If you hit the button, you can get an on-screen reticle for gaming and, and that sort of thing. So that, you know, it's like, is that, I think that might be cheating. It's cheating. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, kind of cheating. Kinda, <laughs> I don't know. Is that, is that, is there a, is there a game mode in like Overwatch that has that? Because that'll be the thing. Well, there are games that don't give you a reticle, like with a bow and arrow or something. I saw them complaining about uh, somebody's making a mouse and keyboard adapter for consoles that works with Overwatch, and the, the Overwatch people came out condemning that. Well, you can get a reticle on your monitor. <laughs> it's nice. So if you pick up one of these or you're thinking about picking up one of these, let us know and let us know what your experiences are. Share your experiences with others in the forum so they can be not afraid of ordering monitors from Korea. Usually they're a pretty good value. This one seems like it's a pretty good value. The price seems a little high for what it is, but it is a 32-inch monitor, and it is, you know, one of the better quality uh, panels that I've seen come out of Korea. But again, it comes down to price and what's available in your area. Do the comparison shopping. Put the specs together. The specs you can count on are the specs that you've gotten from us. We'll see you in the forums, and if you have any questions, that's where we'll be. I'm Wendell. I'm Ryan. See you later.